Um, we've been doing this feature. Do you have a plan? So let's look at our, our plan for this, and then I've done some closing remarks for the year. Um, I do include the book signing. Uh, that will be, as, as indicated, November 17th. It's at the Hawthorne Street Powell's. Um, I will get a book review up um, as well. Lois, did you do a review? Have you done a review? Or no, haven't had, haven't had a chance. Okay, I'll put something up on the uh, uh, the, the uh, current November issue of uh, B Culture Magazine, which you ought to take a look at because it has a, a picture right near Mark's bees on Savvy Island um, about a story about pumpkins. Someone wrote a story about pumpkins in there. Next month, next month, you've got a lot of Oregon people featured next month. You've got to look at uh, December bee culture when it comes out. Okay. The other thing, um, high check. Um, most of you are familiar with uh, with uh, our bee informed survey in April. Um, um, we have our committee met this week about our pub survey, and we we do intend to have a another pub survey. But the bee informed survey in April covers over wintering losses and then management. What we're trying to do uh, uh, something a little bit different now, and that's called high check. And if you uh, want to go on the site and look at what is there, so about every two weeks we ask a series of questions. For example, did you inspect your colonies? This is a, uh, a report specifically for the three states of the Pacific Northwest. So this indicates uh, whether you looked at the colonies. And it's key to um, how many colony hive years you have. And hive years that we calculate by the number of hives you now have and the number of years you say that you are a beekeeper. Okay? So you can then, um, this whole an idea of being informed is look over your neighbor's beekeeping fence and find out what they, he or she is doing with bees. So this is a, a sort of a, a, a smaller scale of that. There's only, a, 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 let's see, what's about eight, eight different questions. Did you feed? Did you, uh, did you uh, uh, super? Um, did you harvest supers? Uh, that, and you can see here in our October report, the end of October, many people were looking at it. But notice the people that have uh, uh, this intermediate level of experience are not doing as much as those that have a lot of experience. Darker colors are, are these that have these number of high, higher number of high years. And also, uh, in terms of the sense of those that did some winter preparations. So I think looking over the, the, uh, the fence of our neighbors, these people that have had more experience, uh, I think are trying to tell us something, and that is that, that, that they're doing some activities with their colonies even at this time of year, and that, that perhaps that's the value we might get from something like hijack. Anyway, um, you'll get this report every couple of weeks, um, so I, I recommend that you, that you check it out, see if it's something that you want to participate in. I'd like more participation, um, et cetera. We have the Citizen Science Project, so if you have some data from this project, I presented that here initially with this group, where you take a pair of hives, you treat one um, and leave the other, you do some assessment of numbers of mites, um, and then uh, treat one and continue the assessment while the treatment is in place and then at the end. So if you've got that data, would you um, kind of get it together and, and get it to me so I can start doing some summarizing of that, uh, that, uh, that particular project. If you didn't have a chance, um, 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 we'll do the project again next year. I'll get it rolled out a little bit earlier and I'll actually um, um, I found out one of the ways that this project works very well is <laughs> if you get something. So for those that would like to do it next year, you're going to get something first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bribery works. Oh, yes. 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 Um, again, uh, we're, I've sort of hammered away uh, uh, with you on this, on this year in terms of some of the options. Uh, in terms of, of the types of things that you might be able to do in the spring, uh, comb replacement, uh, basic sanitation, very passive screen bottom boards. Um, this citizen science project is getting at knowing what kind of numbers of mites you have. So actually sampling. Sampling with both sticky board and then powdered sugar or ether roll and even doing brood uncapping. So that's what this project is, uh, is getting at. And then you treat one of the two colonies after you get the numbers, um, and you and continue getting the numbers as you go through the project. 
Uh, we've, we've talked about a number of different options in terms of, of treatments, um, so-called soft treatments of the essential oils, the two, two, two materials with thyme oil, the acid material, for example, um, and then uh, trying to make an assessment if you want to then go to the one synthetic pesticide, the avobar or not. Um, so why I'm showing this now is um, in your plan then um, many of us think that we are going to get and do some of this but then never really did it. So this would be a good time to, to reflect in terms of the year of what you thought you wanted to do but didn't get a chance to do it. Does that make sense? Write down what you really did want to do or thought that needed to be done but didn't get done. Um, and also, of course, what you did in fact do. Um, because now we're coming into the time of year where it is a crunch time for the bees over winter period. So let's, let's, let's have the bees give, um, give our, their report card in terms of what we might have done um, and, and perhaps then be a, a bit ahead of the curve for next year. It's all about some aspects of planning. So, and what should we be doing in no, 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 um, uh, We should be looking at uh, food stores and moisture control, um, certainly with our colleagues. Um, the food stores, um, we want to see the bees um, setting up in the lower of the two boxes. Most of us do run two boxes uh, with a top bar high. Of course, this is a single box. Um, we want honey to be above them in a traditional Langstroth or movable frame colony. And if this is a top bar hive, we want that honey all to be on one side of where they're setting up the cluster, not on both sides, because that cluster won't be able to move both directions. It's got to move in one direction. Um, our European bees do prefer to move upward. That's why our Langstroth hive works so well and why we have an additional challenge with a top bar hive and that uh, if that cluster is set up and they move in both directions, they're not likely going to be surviving. There's just not going to be enough honey stores. But you can go ahead and reorganize that. So we want to have a food chamber and a brew chamber. And as you lift the hat back of this colony, it should right now really be giving you some resistance. And you can go ahead now through the winter and continue to do that hefting and get a good measure in terms of how much food they're consuming. They're not going to consume much in November. They're going to consume even less in December. But then after day length changes, they'll start consuming them pretty quickly. So getting used to what the weight now is of your colony or colonies will be a good measure as we get progress on through the winter as to what might be actually happening inside. Um, because we don't want to be doing very highly interventive going in and taking a look. You can pop covers off and make sure you've got this, this type of an issue. You can split the boxes. Um, this weekend it's going to be a nice weather. You could even go as far as splitting the boxes in the Odyssey bees um, in this lower box and just extending into the top box. But that top box ought to be pretty heavy. So it ought to be kind of a, a chore to kind of lift them up. If that is the case, you're in pretty good shape. If not, write it down. See how your bees do. We certainly have bees, um, as, as uh, Ken was indicating, Russian bees. Some of our Carniolan stock, if you've got packages of that stock, um, that don't consume as much stores as our town bees. So you have to know the bee that you have. But that's what we hope is, is ideal. Um, we need to really be thinking of cutting off the feeding of a syrup at this point. Uh, moisture stress um, is, is, is uh, now increasing in the colonies. Adding additional moisture by feeding a syrup, in other words, more water, even though you've got a lot of sugar dissolved into it, is just adding some additional stress. Um, generally, we don't think of feeding them um, November, December, um, and, and checking on them in January, and perhaps not back to any feeder into February, and that feeder ought to be either the sugar candy, the solid candy, or it ought to be the dry sugar, not the syrup. Our bees really do have moisture stress. The other part of our equation now is to add some sort of a, a moisture trap at the top of the colonies, an extra rim, and in that rim place something that's going to absorb that moisture, shavings, burlap, um, terry towel cloths, um, find all those old socks under the kids' bed and put all those old socks in there. You don't even have to wash them, just throw them on in there. Um, and something to kind of absorb that moisture. And then this box being vented will then vent off that moisture from the top of the colony. 
Um, so those two things are, are still things that we can do a little bit of tension with uh, with our colleagues um, if we have our plan for trying to help over winter. At this point, because we'll be back in April with our survey, please go ahead and mark down what you have, how many colonies you have, how many you're trying to overwinter, and sort of some measure of how well you think they're doing on these two aspects. Um, and then, then come April, when we're back, um, when we're doing our national survey to be informed, you'll have something to be able to, to tell us about what's going on. A few reflections on the past year. We had these incredibly high losses. We still don't know why, uh, but last over winter, um, as, as high as 70% here in this part of the state. Um, so I guess a good reflection is, is what have you done differently for this coming winter? Uh, what did you do different with your colonies? Um, are we ready to accept another very heavy overwinter loss of 70%? Of um, we, some of the colonies are just not looking very good this fall. It's not a real good portent of what may come ahead. We had lake swarms. Um, lake swarms um, are still good ways to start colonies, but, but you don't go with swarms. They should have been combined. So if you've got some of those lake swarms, those little swarms, um, uh, um, who was it? Uh, and who had the picture? Tim or Andrew had a picture of, of a handful of bees on a pepper plant late swarm in October. Uh, probably a starvation swarm. They just left the colony, what we call absconding. It looks like a swarm because they cluster, uh, but, but uh, not much chance that they're going to survive. Um, we had that very unusual, was it pesticide or was it starvation? Um, that event that occurred in the foothills. We do get a dearth in, in the spring here after we get the, that early flush of maple and some other things. But this was even later than that. Um, we really don't know what, what's happened, so we want to be on the lookout and try to determine what might happen in that case. Very spotty harvest. How did you do? Okay, did you meet your expectations? What were your objectives in your county care this year? Did you meet them? Did you come close to them in terms of both you know, amount of swarming that you had, um, how, built, how well the population built up, um, how they did in terms of any honey, if that's what you wanted to gather, and now how did they set up and prepare for the fall. So I think this is a good time to reflect on that and sort of set it out all down on where you think you win. But well, we're gonna forget it as well. Um, we did not have a fall flow, but that's somewhat normal here that we do not, um, even though even with smart feed, which you know is, is not in all locations. Um, so did you feed? Did you plan to feed? I know intervention beekeeping for some of you is, is beyond what you want to do. It's beyond what you feel you want to do in terms of beekeeping. But, but they are livestock and then we, are, we are their stewards. We are keeping care of them. And a little bit of bee um, can make a big difference, can really make a big difference. To the bee, um, in terms of its food resources, it doesn't make a difference where the sugar source came from. It may, for us as beekeepers, make a big difference. But to the B, the sugar source doesn't make a difference. Um, did you give back that sometime during this year? Um, have you served as a mentor for someone else, to getting someone else started? Um, we're now lining up our people for um, the uh, Oregon Master Beekeeper Program, our apprentice level. We've got some new mentors in the Portland area. Um, so if you have an interest in that program, um, we mentors visit with mentees four times a year. We go through the four bee seasons in an apiary generally, um, in your bees or in another apiary. Um, so if you're interested in this program, uh, check into it. But did you give back? Were you one of our, our great state fair volunteers? Um, for, um, uh, did an activity with others? Are you participating with the Zenger Bees? A great opportunity for the club. Um, now with a couple of other um, very, very active groups as well. Uh, what a year we had in terms of ordinances. I don't know if we've made steps forwards or back. Um, Lois and, and some of the others have been really trying to keep on top of this. Uh, I know Tim has had a bunch of meetings as well as some of the officers of the group. Um, it's not done yet, so we can't rest that we've got some relief on the ordinances, but, but let's hope that we, we, we get somewhere um, with those. And so with all of that, what's the good news? We got bees alive, looking good in the colonies, yeah.
So I think in terms of, of, of uh, the plan, um, you know, what did you do that you did differently this year? How did it result? Did you do some feeding? Did you think you needed to do some feeding? Did you do some uh, Varroa control? What was your VMP, your best management plan? You know, what, what, what works, what, what didn't work, okay? Coming around with your name tags and you want to participate in the raffle? Um, so drop your, your, your name tags, please. And it's past the point of worry. <laughs> Be happy, don't worry. Uh, what a pleasant surprise getting the, the cake this evening. Thank you all. Thank you for that, that, that fine expression. I am off. Um, after um, our seaside meeting, we actually have a professional meeting. Uh, Portland will be invaded by entomologists, not the people that work with words, not the etymologists, but the bug people, entomologists, um, the, the, um, the 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th of the, this month. Our national meetings are here. And then I'm off on the 19th, and I will um, plan to be back. And, be back with a survey for the next meeting that I will be here, which will be April Fool's Day. So won't be a fool, I'll be I'll be back April first. Thank you all for your